The RBS-17, a Swedish coastal defense missile system based on the American AGM-114 Hellfire, represents one of the most effective and versatile missile adaptations in modern military history. Developed by Sweden during the late Cold War period, the RBS-17 combined the precision and lethality of the Hellfire air to ground missile with a unique coastal deployment system tailored to the rugged Nordic terrain. Its purpose was clear, neutralize enemy ships in the complex archipelagos and narrow straits that define much of Sweden's strategic maritime geography. What made the RBS-17 stand out was not just its combat effectiveness but also its clever adaptation from air-to-land-based operations, allowing Sweden to reinforce its coastal defenses without relying heavily on large naval platforms. At its core, the RBS-17 was a mobile coastal missile system. It leveraged the proven AGM-114C Hellfire missile, originally designed for attack helicopters such as the AS-64 Apache, and adapted it for a ground launch role. This transition required significant innovation. Sweden developed a portable launch platform that could be rapidly deployed, concealed, and fired from land-based positions, including cliffs, islands, and even forested coastlines. Each launcher was mounted on light trailers or vehicles, allowing swift relocation after firing. This provided a critical shoot-and-scoot capability, launching a devastating precision strike and then disappearing before counterattacks could be launched. The entire system, including fire control, guidance, and communications, was optimized for quick deployment and operation by small units. The Hellfire missile itself was a perfect match for Sweden's needs. Using semi-active laser guidance, it could deliver pinpoint accuracy over short to medium ranges, typically up to 8 kilometers. This made it ideal for Sweden's coastal waters, where hostile vessels would be operating in confined spaces with limited maneuvering room. Each missile carried a high-explosive anti-tank warhead capable of penetrating armored hulls or inflicting critical damage on fast attack craft. Combined with its high speed and low flight profile, the missile was hard to detect and intercept. Furthermore, its guidance system allowed it to be cued by forward observers or remote laser designators, making it ideal for ambush tactics where the launch site remained hidden. The operational doctrine around the RBS-17 focused on asymmetric coastal defense. Instead of building a massive navy to match regional powers, Sweden invested in systems that could deter or destroy enemy vessels before they could approach critical shorelines or harbors. The RBS-17 units would deploy under cover of terrain and camouflage, wait for enemy naval formations to appear within range, and then strike with precision. The system could be integrated with coastal radar networks and reconnaissance drones, further enhancing its ability to respond quickly to threats. This defensive posture gave Sweden a credible deterrent, increasing the cost of any maritime invasion. One of the most important attributes of the RBS-17 system was its modularity. Because it was based on a proven missile already in service globally, Sweden benefited from economies of scale in maintenance and training. Crews trained on Hellfire systems could operate the RBS-17 with minimal additional instruction. Likewise, Sweden could upgrade its missile stocks as improved Hellfire variants became available, extending the system's relevance into the 21st century. This adaptability also made the RBS-17 an attractive model for other countries considering similar coastal defense needs, particularly those with long coastlines and limited naval forces. Although the RBS-17 was never used in combat, its deterrent value was significant. Throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, as regional tensions shifted and NATO alliances evolved, Sweden maintained the RBS-17 as a strategic option. It was eventually phased out in favor of longer range and more autonomous systems, but it left a strong legacy. The lessons learned in developing and deploying this system influenced later Swedish missile programs and demonstrated the effectiveness of light, mobile, precision-guided coastal defense systems. In an age where versatility and speed increasingly define modern warfare, the RBS-17 proved that even a relatively small nation could punch above its weight with the right mix of technology and strategy. Another important factor behind the RBS-17's success was its cost-effectiveness. Compared to large ship-borne missile systems or advanced fighter jets, the RBS-17 was relatively inexpensive to procure, maintain, and operate. Its simple deployment methods and limited logistics requirements made it suitable for use in remote areas. This affordability allowed Sweden to cover large stretches of its coastline without overstretching its defense budget. It also gave military planners the ability to rapidly adjust the system's deployment based on changing threat patterns, which is a key advantage in fluid geopolitical situations. 
The RBS-17 the of may not be as widely known as some other missile systems, but it holds a special place in the evolution of coastal defense strategy. It demonstrated how a smart adaptation of existing technologies could create entirely new military capabilities. By converting an air-launched missile into a ground-based coastal weapon, Sweden created a defensive tool that was efficient, deadly, and well-suited to its geographical and strategic realities. The RBS-17 was more than just a missile, it was a symbol of innovation, national resilience, and the ability to defend home waters with precision and agility. Its influence continues to be felt in modern coastal defense doctrines worldwide.